Is your gut microbiome making you fat? Possibly. A huge factor that people don't consider when starting a diet is the human microbiome and how the trillions of microorganisms living in your gut affect how you metabolize food. So diets are not as simple as calories in versus calories out. A study from the 50s showed us that the food composition matters even more than the calorie count. In this study, scientists put patients on a diet in which they consumed 1000 calories per day and 90% of it was provided by either fat, protein or carbohydrates. The patients on a 90% fat diet showed 400 grams of weight loss per day and a diet of 90% proteins showed similar loss with 300 grams per day. But surprisingly, the patients who consumed 90% of their calories from carbohydrates actually gained on average 100 grams per day. However, food composition is not the only factor that should be taken into consideration. In Canada, students enrolled in a study that isolated them from the rest of the world for 120 days. The participants of the study were only allowed to eat, sleep, watch TV and read. This must sound like a dream for most students, but there was a caveat. The students were restricted from all physical activity and were overfed 1000 calories extra per day. After the 120 days, the students gained on average 8.1 kilograms of body weight, which is not really surprising. What was surprising, however, was the range of weight gain. While some students gained 4.3 kilograms, others gained up to 3 times more weight. The results of this study show that there is something more than just a macronutrient composition. One could argue that it is all genetics that makes a big difference here. But consider the following. The human DNA is 99.9% .9 similar between individuals. What I'm getting at is that there is actually a third factor that seems to play an important role. A factor that has been overlooked and has never been taken into consideration very much. The factor I'm talking about is the inhabitants of your gut, your microbiome. With 100 trillion microbes in your gut, there are about 10 times as many microbial cells in the body as there are human cells. With an estimate of more than 10,000 different species of microbes, they provide a metabolic capacity which exceeds the liver with a factor of 100. And while the human DNA is very similar between individuals, there are huge differences in the composition of the microbiome between different people. This might explain why somebody becomes overweight or develops a disease, but somebody with the same DNA stays perfectly healthy. Now imagine the following scenario. Two genetically identical people decide to lose weight by going on a diet. The only difference between the two twins is that one of them was treated for 10 days with an antibiotic which kills big parts of his microbiome. So will the twins lose weight equally? Based on the evidence found in various studies, absolutely not. In fact, there is no shortage of studies showing how antibiotic usage leads to abnormal weight gain. One reason antibiotics are used so much in livestock is because at some point farmers discovered that by using antibiotics the animals grow fatter. Just using low concentration of antibiotics is enough to alter the composition of gut bacteria and promote fat gain. But even if you've never taken antibiotics, your microbiome could still be promoting weight gain. Researchers found that the microbiome of overweight people is already very different compared to lean people, regardless if they take any medication. Scientists even invented a special name for it, the obese microbiome. To exclude the factor of genes, researchers analyzed the microbiome of twins. These twins were quite physically different from each other. One twin was lean while the other one was obese. After taking a look at each twin's individual microbiome, they found that their microbiomes were just as different as their physical appearance was. The obese individuals had a far less diverse microbiome. The diversity of our microbiome is critical for our health and a less diverse microbiome has been associated with many diseases. Another group of researchers looked into the phylums of gut bacteria found in lean and obese twins. They found that the obese twins had 20% more of one group of bacteria called Firmicutes and nearly 90% less of another group called Bacteroidetes. These two bacterial groups are the two most prominent phylums in our microbiome which make up to 90% of our total microbiome. Researchers use the ratio of these two groups as biomarker for obesity. The higher the ratio of Firmicutes to Bacteroidetes, the higher the risk of becoming overweight. 
The study also questions if the ratio of Firmucutes to Bacteroidetes was set in stone. These obese volunteers were set on a diet for one year and their percentage of Bacteroidetes nicely increased while they lost weight. This shows us that the microbiome diversity is up to change with alterations in the diet. The next study is a great example of how the human microbiome can have a huge influence on your waistline. Researchers sucked microbes from the guts of lean mice and obese ones. Then they injected the microbes into the intestines of animals whose own microbes were deleted due to steroid caging. The mice injected with the obese microbes gained roughly double the quantity of fat than those that received the lean microbes. Another paper published in the Journal of Science went one step further with this research by extracting the microbiome from human twins, one obese twin and one lean twin, and then transferred the microbes into different sterile mice. I guess by now you won't be surprised to hear the results of the study showed that the mice who received the obese microbiome gained more body mass, especially fat, than the mice with the lean microbiome. Let me cite the sheep editor of the renowned science journal Nature here. Fat people harbor fat microbes, so bees are often blamed for their own corpulence. But perhaps, just perhaps, some of the blame should be placed on another type of organism entirely, bacteria. Here's another example on how easy you can improve your odds. In 2015, scientists gave a group of volunteers 21 grams of fiber extra per day or just a placebo. After just 21 days, the abundance of bacteroidetes increased by 13% in the group that received the extra fiber. With this knowledge, one might consider that the first step of a diet should be to reset our microbiome. For the start, it would be the best to focus on less processed foods because they contain naturally more fiber and maybe even include some probiotic foods such as yogurt, kefir, kimchi or kombucha. For my last diet, it certainly helped me a lot to focus on a diet with high fiber intake. I never lost fat so easily while stayed mentally sharp. Click the subscribe button and like this video if you enjoyed it. And leave me some comments about what you are interested in. Thank you for watching.